in the last uh, video, we were hoping to uh, be able to trim up the mold when the air uh, went green. But unfortunately, it was too cold and they didn't set off the way I'd like it. So we're doing that today. So this is how I trim it. Simple, uh, uh, I guess, 50 cent knife from Home Depot or wherever. And uh, it's a little tougher right now because these molds are not green. They're actually pretty much cured, but we'll get by. So first I'm just going to do a quick trim, pushing down onto the padding plane as I do it. Helps guide the uh, knife. Right, we have these uh, rear end molds all uh, trimmed up, so everything's pretty good. See, all we're doing is basically flushing to the surface of the uh, parting plane. And uh, that's about it. So, you know, you just feel if it's uh, fairly flush. If it's not, then just re-trim it a little bit. So that's the uh, rear end done, ready for prep for joining. But I think I'm going to join the rear and the front when they are done all at the same time. Much easier that way and don't have to keep using different gloves, etc. See you in a bit. So what I'm going to do now, because this is going to be basically a five-part uh, mold, uh, or joining of five parts, I guess. I'm going to just quickly test fit that all the uh, alignments are good. Nothing is interfering. Because if it interferes, you can get bulges in the sidewalls, which don't look too pretty once you've uh, cracked the molds open. So the part can come out looking uh, bumpy and bad and everything. So I've not got anything interfering with these right now so let's take a look at the front and uh, let's see it goes on that way i believe so just check in everything so yeah nothing's compressing so the side walls are all uh, adhering to each other and everything should be good So before we go ahead and start mixing up any of the uh, goop or splooge, as I call it sometimes, what I'm doing is I'm uh, getting the tools all ready. This is a, uh, a uh, chip brush, utility brush, whatever they call them. I put it onto a uh, piece of 3 8 dowel, cut it on an angle. I've uh, hot glued it in uh, side so it's connected. So I want it on an angle so that when the molds are closed, I can reach in and uh, spread either resin or push down the tape. Then in this case, I'm using some actual uh, three quarter, no, sorry, one inch, uh, six ounce fiberglass uh, cloth tape. This you can buy like that. Now, if you don't want to spend the money on this stuff, because it's not exactly cheap, you can just cut uh, one inch strips or two inch strips, whatever you prefer, of the six ounce cloth that you laid up the sides with. Then I've got just a basic uh, flat, reasonably sort of semi stiff, I guess, brush, which I'm going to use the PVA on. So the next step is I'm going to go around the periphery of everything with PVA so that when I put the uh, mold halves together it reduces the stick so it's easier to separate so now the pva has magically appeared and i'm gonna uh just start spreading it around you don't want to get it onto the uh, fiberglass edges here if you can help it so we'll just start by uh 
coming as close as we can without actually getting it onto the fiberglass parting plate. All right, here's a little bit of a tip. Just over here, that when I was trimming this side, I uh, probably got a bit out of uh, kilter and uh, the edge pulled away, leaving about 30 seconds of an inch gap. Now, if you don't fix that, what that's gonna do is gonna cause the resin to get underneath, which will create an ugly bubble in this seam. So to fix it, take a heat gun. Get it all heated up. When, when the uh, glass is hot, just push it in, hold it for, uh, I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds. And uh, epoxy usually finds its uh, original form uh, under heat. So right now, yeah, that's closed up. So we're good to go. Just uh, be aware, you want those seams touching right up to the molds. You don't want any separations whatsoever. Another thing is, is uh, I have this nose section. The reason this is separate is because I need to gain access through this end of the mold. So basically I can get my hand or that little brush gizmo I made inside to do the seams. If I uh, form the whole thing with this nose section on, then there's no way in. So I would have to try and do it from the rear, which is about four feet deep. And there's no way I'd be able to get into these corners or anything like that. So this baby, which is the nose section, gets put on last when the uh, joint seams have been done and the two halves are together. Alrighty, it's goop mixing time. So uh, what I'm using is 30 millimeters of uh, resin and uh, hardener combined. I'm going to use uh, probably 25% uh, cotton flock, which is uh, it's kind of like that uh, when they put fabulous in concrete, little strands of cotton in this case, or nylon or whatever it is. And well, I guess cotton. And uh, it helps bind it all together. Because we want a fairly strong mix for these joints. So we're going to mix her up and instead of doing a consistency of mayonnaise where it's quite runny what i'm going to do is more like i guess a uh, soft peanut butter what's not been in the fridge of course so it's a little stiffer and won't run out of the joints as easy One little, little bit of advice I would give you is when you uh, do this stuff for the first time or even the second time, whether it's laying up a mold or doing a, uh, actually building a mold or laying up a part like this, choose a, uh, you know, an amount of volume of resin or, you know, an amount of fiberglass cloth or whatever and keep like a lab book, put all that information in. Because if you build one of these things, you know, several months down the road or a few years, you'll uh, forget what you did. And like in this case, it's 30 millimeters of resin I'm trying. And uh, if it's enough to cover the entire molds as I do them, then uh, I might save resin down the road. All right, we're going to snip off approximately a one-eighth diameter at the end there. I'm probably doing this all wrong, but I've never done icing before, so let's see. Oops. Yeah, not big enough. So let's go to uh, three-sixteenths. Let's see if that's a bit better. Got a feeling I don't have enough splooge, but anyway. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'll go a bit bigger even. 
All right, so we're up to about uh, I don't know, quarter inch now, I guess. All right, that's much better. So what I'm doing is I'm just basically putting it 50-50 between the lip of the uh, parting plane here and uh, the fuselage edge. And the theory here, when you squeeze them together, you do get a flashing, but that's unavoidable. We're going to go to this side, do the same thing, let it get all over your hands as usual. And if I run out, it's no big deal on, in this particular instance because I can get easy access to the joint. This is more just for reinforcement. And I can get the tape in with no problem whatsoever. Alrighty, ouch. The splooge is done on uh, both sides. I've put extra here, more than obviously I need to join the, uh, the two halves. And the reason for that is I can get into all of this section with the, uh, you know, all, all through here with the tape from this side, but I can't get into this section. So what I'm gonna do is have the splooge. I'm gonna flip the molds once I got them clamped and screwed. Flip the mold until this basically touches the other side, which then uh, creates like a bond. So let's just get rid of this. You can maybe see that the, uh, the splooge is just beginning to run down the edges, and that's what we want. Okay. So we're locking up all our alignment dots. Put a couple of clamps on. I guess I'm gonna to have to be putting a lot of clamps on because I forgot to put drill holes in this mold. <laughs> all right. I'm just going to be uh, clamping this mold because I don't want to start drilling with the splooge on there and get bits of grit down in between. So it's going to make it a little more awkward to uh, put the tape in. But we'll just have to make the best of it. So let's see. What we can do is big clumps on this side. And then we'll put the small ones here. And in this case, I do have a couple of uh, screws. I mean, uh, drilled holes, I should say. So we'll put just a, a couple of uh, screws in strategic spots. Okay, I'm trying to show you uh, what's actually going on inside the fuse right now. So you can see that I've not turned the fuse lag and you can see all the goop is dripping uh, from the top down. So that's obviously gravity. So what I'm going to do now is flip it the opposite way. So now it's done the other way and we'll, uh, in about five minutes or so, we should see that the goop has uh, dropped down like, onto the other side, which gives you a really good joint. And like I say, this is really good for things like uh, aileron, rudders, small parts, which you can't get in with the tape. So that's how you do it, folks. Okay, here we are. These uh, two halves are now joined. I don't know whether you can see. We're going to try it. 
But I was able to, uh, unfortunately, I don't seem to be able to focus. But anyhow, right at the uh, tip of the f um, tail end there, I was able to uh, put about four inches of the tape in by wetting the brush, sticking the tape on and just dropping it down there until it stuck. And then you can see that I've got a nice edge all the way up. Nicely wetted out, even though it doesn't look it because of all the splooge, but it is uh, nicely wetted. And this is how I did it. I simply put the tail section so it's vertical, so gravity uh, was with me. And then dropped it down, guided it with my uh, brush thingamajig over here. I was able to just uh, get the resin on and perfect joint. All right, I'm going to try something different. Normally, I, uh, I wait until uh, tomorrow, let's say, to uh, join the two front and back fuselages together. But this time, I'm going to try uh, doing it all at the same time. We've done the seaming and uh, we've prepped everything. So we'll see. Worst case, it doesn't take and I do it tomorrow. But normally what I do is uh, I'll take the uh, front section out of the mold, cut out the canopy and the saddle. That gives me a great big uh, amount of room to be able to uh, get in there and tape it, tape the joint. So what I'm going to try and do today is do a, a temporary glue up so that the front and the back of the fuselage come out together, which would give me a really a perfect seam, hopefully. And uh, anyhow, I've never tried this method before, but we'll see. Now, for as long as the two halves glue together good, then uh, it's not a problem. I can cut out the canopy tomorrow, uh, take the tape and glue them together. So here goes. Boy, these things get heavy. All right, so gonna get a really good alignment here. Okay, we've engaged everything. Put a couple of temporary clamps on. Oops. And we'll get some screws in there. And hopefully it works. We shall see. All right, there's all six foot of our fuselage screwed and clamped together, front and back, left and right sides, top to bottom, even the nose is on there. So, like I say, I don't normally do it this way, but we shall see. I know the nose will be good. Whether the uh, this bit where we uh, join the front and back will hold when we split the molds, well, that's another thing. The molds are not seasoned just yet. Molds are like uh, you know one of those cast iron frying pans. The more you use it and grease it, the uh, slippery, it, the slippier it gets, if that's the right word. And uh, the molds are the same, so. Another two or three layups, these molds will be nice and seasoned and uh, will come apart so much better. Right now, this is the second uh, layup, and this is from my uh, business partner, Brad. This is his plane. He uh, co funds uh, all the builds and works on them with me. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Next one is a customer build. Now you see my uh, orange Arbor Freight 
chisels uh, have magically appeared and these are what I like to use to uh, separate the molds. So we're just going to go around first, around the perimeters with just a little twisty motion and uh, try and get some relief. Just be gentle. When it cracks like that, that's good. Well, it's either that or the mold just broke, but anyhow, <laughs> we'll see. So I'm just basically easing the parts a little bit. Like I was saying yesterday, these molds are not uh, completely, uh, what's the word again? Seasoned. There we go. <clears throat> so, uh, they're a little tough sometimes to separate. I've got three or four layups in them. Oh, this wants to be a bit of a bugger. There we go. Ah, oh, damn it. Well, it came out, but it came out in two halves, but I kind of expected that might happen. No big deal. That's where uh, we got the uh, the uh, splue on to try and join these two halves. I was hoping to try and get it out all as one, but I think it's uh, it's not in the cards. As you can see, it's not the easiest thing to get some of these parts out. <laughs> two people. There we go. Let's go. So this is uh, probably the easiest part to lift it from. There we go. I tell you, it's a struggle. Let's move the camera. I'll go back to the old way of uh, putting the nose section on when uh, the parts are out of the mold because obviously uh, that's a weak point. And uh, the same with the uh, rear end. Trying to do it this way uh, just doesn't work. Normally uh, I put a flange piece into the mold, creates an interlocking flange here and uh, the opposite on the tail section. 
and that allows us to uh, just basically epoxy them together and then put some tape on. The reason I did it in two halves was obviously because trying to tape uh, is difficult, obviously, with all the molds together, but also for shipping. I uh, made each front and back size so they'll fit in a uh, standard, uh, well, not a standard, but at least a shipping uh, container that one can purchase. So anyhow, let's inspect it. Okay, it's uh, it's not been cleaned off, so there's lots of gunk on there is the uh, parting frame. I mean the uh, PVA. So let's uh, go through here. Take a look at it. That is uh, meant to be that little uh, dimple there. The rivets look good. These uh, tabs are for putting magnets in, which just keep the canopy, I mean the uh, cowl, from moving. These spots here have come out very nice. That's uh, just a little crap what's come out. That came out nice. That's where we were having the problem before. All around here, this little uh, canopy lock uh, mechanism. That usually comes out when you're trying to get the mold. I think we fixed that. So all in all, this guy is pretty much, oh, except for a little void there. That's what we're probably locking up in the mold. So, so far it looks like, uh, except for that void, I think we've got pretty much uh, a perfect uh, layup. Pity those uh, parts came out with the goop, but you can't tape it from inside, unfortunately. So let's look at the back. Okay, here's the back section. Let's see this. Detail looks good there. A little bit of flashing to take off. Let's see, these uh, ventral fins and what have you are looking real nice. All the rivet detail came out beautiful. No voids in them. Before I was getting voids in all of these. Yeah. Everything's looking real sweet, actually. Oh, there's a little one. See this one in the corner? Easily fixable. Now, I could have chipped that out when I was trying to get the chisel in, so that may may not be a problem. But uh, so far, everything looks pretty damn good. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, cleaned off and uh, trimmed up. That's a big leap forward compared to uh, prototype number one, which had at least 20 little miniature, you know, minor voids on the fuselage. But I'm very pleased with that. I'll go clean them all up. All right, let's trim a little bit of this flesh enough. Just lightly going over it. Not too heavy. I don't want to scratch everything up. Just want to get the flesh enough. Not bothered about this, this section gets cut away. They are these things. And uh, the molds are wet right now, so we'll just dry them off a little bit. PVA is uh, great because it just literally rinses off. I just use a uh, running water and a light uh, sponge give it a few strokes over and the running water and off it comes now i have i only did a quick one on this one right now so i will have to uh once i've got it all assembled i'll give it a real deep cleaning with some maybe windex and whatever you seem to do the trick anyhow we have a fuselage.
So what I'm going to do now is cut the video, clean up all this flushing, and then uh, we'll go into uh, weighing it up and see how heavy it is. Just a bit. Time to uh, weigh this sucker. Let's see. We'll start with this. Where's my uh, pen? So, uh, oh, if I put it on there. So we've got basically uh, one ounce. Then we've got the tail section, which is 11.8. Ounces, and then we've got the front, which is well, one point. There we go, one point five two. So that's uh, well, one pound eight something ounces. So it's actually uh, lighter than the prototype, which I think was uh, one or two ounces uh, heavier. So with the tail section and everything, which I think comes less than a pound, then we should be basically around three pounds, I guess, for the entire fuselage, excluding the wing. So that's pretty good. Anyhow. Great stuff. Let's uh, clean the molds up and then uh, we'll look at splicing these body parts together. Due to the uh, weather and it being kind of chilly in the shop, I decided to uh, bring the uh, completed fuselage inside. So everything worked out good. Um, because I hadn't put the original flange on the front and back where I usually splice it together, then tape it, it was a little bit of a issue trying to line it up. But we learned our lesson, so we'll never do this uh, method again. So everything's taped up. Don't think you can see inside. No. Oops. No. But anyhow. The uh, cowls have been cut out, everything's taped up, everything's going to uh, be okay. Just have to let it all harden tomorrow, by tomorrow. And then we'll uh, clean all these uh, areas up and then uh, clean up all the molds for the rear empennage and uh, wax them, then start laying those up. So another couple of days worth of work. See you in a bit.